Hey guys, we're here with Mark from Mazworks. Uh, this is Mark from Real Street. We're gonna tear into our 3.5 liter dart engine. We just completed over 35 passes up to 1800 horsepower. We're gonna tear it apart today and see how it lived. Uh, smells like an F all motor. Okay. I mean, the cams look pretty good. Yeah, I mean, like normally, that's with the one set. Get the worst. No, it seems fine. You got the tiniest little bit of witness on this very first leg. Looks like it's right around where like the stand would be on the inner structure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. buck is usually show a lot more than that. Yeah, you know, for first lap or two. Awesome. At least these are leaking. So these are the new Kelford DLC buckets. Uh, and we're really, really excited about these uh, for, you know, 20 years we've, uh, our best option has been the uh, Toyota factory shimless bucket from the 2ZZ. And now we have a proper aftermarket bucket that's not only DLC coated, but it, the material is harder itself. in the hole. Thank you, sir. ¿Qué tenemos? No, oh, it has that ethanol hue to it. It does. Yeah, you can see like the, in the hone. Right there. The ethanol leaves like a, a brownish stain, usually just from rusting. Yeah, it's a, it's a hydroscopic um, fuel, which means that it attracts water. So whenever it's resting, it's going to try to bring water in. And then when you put it on fresh metal, 
you get rust very quickly. A lot of pump gases have uh, different lubricities, uh, lubricity additives and oil, uh, oils to keep the cylinder wall coated even when the car is sitting. But a lot of the race fuels aren't gonna have those extra things in them. And you can see the traces here where it could be mm -hmm. seen as it lifting the head a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe this is our uh, combustion bleed. We only had, um, on the 1700 horsepower passes, we were at like 13 to 14 pounds of coolant pressure. And then when we got over 1800, it went up to about 16 to 18, but it wasn't anything, um, mm -hmm. anything huge. But yeah, that could, that could definitely be some of that. For an ethanol motor, cylinders actually look pretty good. Yeah, they, they really do. But I mean, then again, you did it, guys didn't run it for a year or two. Right. You usually get them back after a race season, they'll have these ring marks where they've been sitting, the piston's been sitting in one spot for like you could a see, week or two. Like you could see up here, like would you call this a bit of heat? Here. You wanna take a look at this one? Like, do you think that that's a little bit of heat or is that just- All those heat marks right there? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like obviously we're, we're starting to push ethanol and we have a little bit more here. Well, you know, that's funny is because that's, that's about as how thick the deck is. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, because you can see, yeah, you know, like right here is where it's thick, and then the water coolant will go through it, and mm -hmm. that's where it's thick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, a little just... bit, a little bit of heat up there, and then a little bit more down here. Three, three definitely seemed like it was the hottest as far as discoloration. But I mean, that's the name of the game. You want thicker iron, you're gonna have less heat transfer, right? Or the well, less rate of heat transfer. Gold in the box? What do you see? Two or three golds? Yep. That piston sealing good because it's holding all the oil. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, all the rod caps look good. I don't see any any color from here, which of course is good. If we would have seen color, we would have had more like metal in the uh, in the pan. But all seems good so good. far. I mean, the piston is definitely fine. That one's probably the, the most suspect bearing there. Oof, yeah. Yep. Yeah, look at this. Interesting witness. It's not debris. Yeah, it's not like witnessing grooves, it's just like almost patterning. 
So I was able to speak with Dan Begley at Clevite, and he said that the bearings appear to have suffered an overlay fatigue, likely due to a compromised oil film, which makes a lot of sense given our use of the OEM wet sump oiling system. He also noted the wear on the lower bearings, with two of the common culprits for this wear being high piston speed and heavier rotating assembly weight. Given that we were using a steel rod and a heavy pin and a heavy piston on a compromised oil film, all at high engine speed, this falls in line with what we expected. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the only biggest concern we see is the, the rod bearings, really. Yeah. Yeah, I so mean, what's going on with that? But other than that, it, like the block, I, I don't see. The mains were tight in it. I mean, after a while with the two with the stock QJs, you can when you take them apart, you can see that the mains just want to fall. Start relaxing out yeah. of the saddles. Yeah, like yeah, the block these, splitting. Yeah, this one was super tight. Um, we saw a little bit of a uh, little little bit of uh, color at the top of the bores, um, probably just below the deck surface, but that's that's normal for two JZs. Um, this is still an ethanol engine, you know, even making over 1800. A lot of people had switched to methanol by then, which would help with cooling. Um, but so, you know, we're just trying to keep this combination as kind of as close to what a lot of people use as we can and then kind of slowly uh, change things. So we might have found some good information about the lightweight crank, maybe the bearing. Um, we want to keep playing around with it uh, to see what we can uh, learn from here. Yeah. Oh, that, it's unshrouding? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's coming out that far. Yeah. Wow. That's a big stroke, for sure. That's the only problem is sometimes you might just get some scuffing in that area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Roll the edges on the bottom of the cylinder and it's just it moving so fast. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, this thing was had a ton of piston speed. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a lot of RPM, but since it has so much stroke, it's still a ton of piston speed. Block-wise, I'm super excited. Uh, Rod-wise, super excited. Um, the pins all feel loose, you know, when we get the parts cleaned up. Um, all the pins slide really well, which is typically uh, a good sign. I mean, these were the Trend TP1 pins, which we literally never have an issue with, it seems like. So I didn't expect a pin issue. Uh, Super happy with the rods, um, but yeah, great, great uh, place to build from. Um, gasket looked like it held up extremely well, given that it was a traditional size, uh, traditional fastener, and nothing exotic on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so that wraps it up for the first part of our teardown here. Now, uh, Mark and his team are going to uh, clean up all these parts, and uh, they'll let us know if they see anything else, uh, anything else of note. But we feel like we've got an outstanding uh, first baseline test here. Um, the the block looks looks pretty perfect. Um, you know, obviously they'll get it cleaned and measured and, and, and see if there's anything, but I don't see any transfer of metal across the block surface. All the bores look really good. We saw a little bit of heat up at the top of the bores, which is normal for a 2JZ. We see that on the standard block. So we're going to keep pushing this one it's at its max bore limit. So it's going to be in its weakest state, but let us know what you guys would like to see us put this together as. What crankshaft would you like to see in it? What pistons, what rods, what sort of build would you like to see us try to make 2000 with? We'd like to say thank you first and foremost to Mazworks for doing all this work and getting this engine together for us. You know, we work really closely with these guys and it's a relationship that means a lot to us. I also want to thank Dart for trusting us to be the, one of their development partners on this block. And we're really excited to uh, build this into the next phase of the 2JZ. We also want to thank Brian Crower for providing this crankshaft, providing the rods. The, we've had a lot of awesome partners on this project. Kelford with the DLC buckets and just a lot of really cool parts with really great companies that are excited about learning where things break and how to make things better, even for a 30-year-old engine.